The Metropolitans have come storming out of the gate this season. And for more on this fast start, let's check in with our field reporter, Heidi Watney. Well, Matt, many believed coming into the season that this team was one to watch. But I don't think many saw this coming. They've been absolutely dominating. Now, I'm told that in spring training, their manager talked about making an early season statement to their fans and to the rest of the league. Well, they expect to be a major factor in this year's pennant race. Message received, Matt. All right. Thanks, Heidi. Ready for another chance? Paul DeYoung, 0 for 2 on his line thus far. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Good fastball as he gets the swing and a miss. One run on three hits. One error for the Cardinals to this point. Fly ball out to straightaway right. Moving under it. Conforto. And that's the third out. But not before the lone hit in the inning. The solo home run makes this a one-run ball game. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Mets two and the Cardinals one. Now at the plate, Wilson Ramos. Lifetime versus this pitcher. He's hitless in three at-bats. First pitch of the at-bat. In there, and it's 0-1. You know, you look at this hitter, he doesn't care about being down 0-1. He doesn't care about having two strikes with him. He's got the utmost confidence in his ability to work back into the count and get him something over the heart of the plate. Breaking ball below the zone. That's ball one. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. There's a change up taken, but it finds the zone on the inside. Two and two to the Mets catcher. Full count now three and two. And just when you needed a shutdown inning a leadoff walk was certainly not on the agenda. He needs a bear down right here. And a good take there will net him a base runner as it's ball four now to start the eighth inning. Yeah, well, when a guy's swinging the bat as well as he's been, this is a smart move. No reason to tempt fate out there. First pitch on its way. In the dirt here. And that'll hurt as the runner will move into scoring position now. Well, now might be a good time to make a visit to the mound. Your pitcher walks the first batter and allows them to get into scoring position with the wild pitch. Got to settle him down and make sure everything's all right physically. Ready with the 1-0. And, oh, looked like ball two below the knees, but it's ruled a strike, and that evens the count at one and one. Now a change up but it misses just a little below the zone. Ramos leads off second with nobody out. Three and one to the Mets left fielder. He's got himself into a little bit of trouble out here. Middle of the order up in a run scoring situation and now he might have to challenge him. Going to have to make some good pitches here. This is skied out toward right. Martinez sprinting after it. He makes the catch. A great effort to get there and record the first out of the inning. Here's Bobby Cano now. Not much in the way of productivity from him so far, but he's got a chance to come through here in a crucial spot. Yeah, it's time now that he has to put the rest of those bats behind it because none of that matters if he can clutch up when it really counts. And a ball 1-0. Our pitcher's duel continues here. Two to one score as we play the eighth. And he misses again to Cano. It's 2 and 0 now. Boy, he just looks locked in at the plate right now to me. His numbers in recent games have been very good, and those were two stone cold takes right there that put himself in a great hitter's count. 3 and 0 now. Up in the strike zone, but the take sign was on three and one. 
Hit on the ground to short. DeYoung gathers it in. And a bit of a high throw that time, but no problem over there at first as they record the out. Coming to the plate now, Michael Conforto. His career numbers in this matchup, he's 0 for 4. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. Swing and a liner. A leap, but he can't bring it down. Base hit. And a big RBI there as the run scores from second to make this a two-run game now. Well, they already had the lead, but that extra run makes a huge difference. Even if it's only psychological, the pitcher knows when he steps out there that he has a little bit of wiggle room to work with. So it's a runner at first with two men out. And up next, the switch hitting Stanford product, Jed Lowry. Here comes the first pitch. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Ozuna is under it, and he makes the catch for out number three. So it's one run on one hit, one cardinal error, and one man left on base. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. It's the Mets three and the Cardinals one. Into the box now, Yadier Molina. He'll see what he can do leading off the home eight. I mean, Yadi when he first broke on the scene, was a defender first and foremost. You can't say that anymore. I mean, he's evolved into a really, really nice offensive player. Strike one to start the at bat. 0 oh 1 the count to Molina. Swung on, but it's pulled foul wide of third. Left side. Backhanded. Throw by Lowry, and there's the first out. Stepping in, Harrison Bader. He flew out his first time around and then was a strikeout victim most recently. First pitch on its way. Bottom part of the zone, and the slider is in there for a called strike. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. But it bends just foul into the second deck. A wind up and the 0-2 pitch. And another foul ball. Into the wind up. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. And he struck him out. And that's eight strikeouts thus far. It's so hard to hit when you're behind the count 0 and 2 right you have to protect for the fastball you have to look for the soft stuff down and away you're really at a disadvantage when you fall behind 0 and 2 Dexter Fowler will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher good off speed pitch had him out in front for strike one. One run on three hits and two errors to this point for the Cardinals. Swing and a miss and he's quickly in the hole 0 and 2. He's feeling it out there on the mound just getting the ball and throwing it with a lot of confidence right now. Fowler behind the ball and two strikes. Decided to go with a fastball there on 0 and 2 but what he's trying to do with that pitch is to expand the strike zone. Maybe you get a guy to... looking at a fastball to end the inning. Down in order go the Cardinals, and it remains a 3-1 ball game. John Brebbia enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Striding in, Dominic Smith. It was a backwards K, a strikeout looking for him in his last at-bat. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Line towards center field. Bader is there, one quick out to start inning number nine. Jumped all over that first pitch of the inning, and he didn't miss it. Just wasn't able to steer it in a direction that resulted in a leadoff hit. Okay. 
in now Jacob DeGrom as the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one a hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ball game. A one count here's the pitch mine to the right side leaps high as he makes the catch well done off the bat that had soft base hit written all over it but a nice snag there by the infielder on that soft liner that could have been a potential base hit. Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball one and oh. One and one to the Mets leadoff hitter. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he comes back with a fastball one and two now. Now a swing and the barrel of the bat breaks in two that time. Throw on to first gets him and the side is retired. Mets go down one two three and it's still three to one. Stepping in for the Cardinals Jose Martinez. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Here's the first pitch to him. And he holds up here but the pitch is a cold strike anyway. To the left side but it's well fouled. Looking for his 10th strikeout. Here's the pitch. Hit down the third baseline. But this will be a foul ball and it's still 0-2. The 0-2 once more. Is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. Talk about blowing it by a guy. Geez, I mean, that fastball was way behind him when the swing came through the zone. I have to think he was looking for something off speed, and he just couldn't pull the trigger on that fastball. Fulton Wong will stand in. As he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. In previous duels with DeGrom, he's just one for 13. He's also gone down on strikes five times. And he popped him up over toward the left side of the infield. Lowry is there, and folks are starting to head for the exits now. Two gone here in the ninth. Ready once again, Paul Goldschmidt. He comes to the plate as the last chance for his side. Two out here in the ninth. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And a fastball's in there for strike one. You have to find a way in this situation to look in that on deck circle and find a way to get your best hitter to the plate with a chance to tie it. And that's taken for strike two as now they're down to their final strike here this afternoon. Two run game last of the night with two away. Softly hit out to short. Throw on to first is going to be in time to get him. And the Mets continue the role they've been on. Seven straight victories now as this ball game is over. Another impressive win for a team that has leapt out of the starting blocks. Yeah, this team is an all systems go mentality right now, Matty V. And when that's the case, you don't change anything. You just try to let it ride. It's been an impressive beginning to the season. Yeah, and it's starting to look awful easy for them, guys. Hats off to this ball club for such a great start.
And guys, Jed Lowry is a guy whose contributions to this team cannot be understated. No doubt, Matt. He's not considered a superstar on his team, but he's a veteran who brings a lot to the table. If he could have one of his better years at the plate, it could go a long way in helping this club go where they eventually want to get, and that's to the postseason. Here's Jed Lowry now. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. See you drive like you can. Here you go. Ready going, to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Offered at and missed. Here's the throw. Not in time. He's in there at second. It was pretty obvious he would likely be on the move with two outs, and I'm sure the defense knew it too. But he has lightning speed and was able to take the bag anyways. Broxton stands hey, at second in, with two in. gone. Drive that pitch now, eh? Line toward the alley in left center. And that gets down as he can't get there in time. The run comes across to score, and they jump ahead 1-0. Boy, when teams are playing well like this team is on a nice little winning streak right here, they strike early in this one to keep the mojo working. Yeah, Dan, from an offensive standpoint, everyone searches for confidence, and that's exactly what they have right now. Everyone contributing makes for a fun clubhouse. Next for the Mets, Dominic Smith. He enters play hitting in the 260s for the year. Hey, wait for yours here. That's you. Working for the punch out and the offering. Get up, ball. Get up, ball. Lined into right, a base hit. The throw to third. And he'll be thrown out at third. Trying to take the extra base with two gone, and the inning is now over. So one run on three hits, no errors, and a runner left. On now to the bottom of the second. The Mets are out on top, one to nothing. Digging in for his second at bat, Jed Lowry. And their runners at the corners now. Here we go. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Strike taken as the curveball drops into the bottom part right, of the zone. On, yeah. One time. Let it fly. Hit hard towards center. And a base hit, and that'll get the run in from third. And time will be called here as the pitching coach heads out to the mound and hopefully try and settle this guy down a bit. At the plate, Dominic yeah, Smith, on one for one, one after a single this first time up. Yeah, and they take another single right here. That third base coach is dying to wave his arms. I wouldn't be surprised if anything hit hard through the infield. He's going to wave them. But gloved by the third baseman for the out. And he is out on the tag. Mets forced to settle for one here in the inning. Now to the plate, Jed Lowry. Singled home a run in his last time up. Hey, find something you like up there. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Fastball too high to start him out here, 1-0. The 1-0 is a ball below the zone. Boy, he just looks locked in at the plate right now to me. His numbers in recent games have been very good, and those were two stone-cold takes right there that put himself in a great hitter's count. Clips the corner of the zone with a sinker for a strike. Five runs, 11 hits, and no errors on the Mets' line score so far. To two and two now. Wait for a good one. Hey, have a rip. Wait again. Here you go. And there's ball three on a breaking ball that misses away. Dominic Smith, the number eight hitter here, waits on deck. See it? Drive it. Let's go, kid. And a good sinker there gets him swinging for the first out. 
And while we have a moment, here's a look at the Padres' road to the show report. Two players that this organization has to be happy about right now. Next to the plate for the Padres, Francisco Mejia. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Come set with the 0 and 1. Grounded back up the middle. And no towards second. On to first. It's a double play. As their woes continue, the inning is over. Four to six to three. They roll it up to get out of the jam. On to the back third tonight. Stick around on the show. Into the box now. Greg Garcia. He singled his last time up. Jankowski over at second. Myers at first with no outs. Hold up. Hard lighter, but picked up on a hop. Barehanded for one. On to first, and they get the double play. Oh, that's a rally killer right there. They were in great shape with two on and nobody out. But the double play is the last thing you want in that situation. Just a runner at third now, but there's two outs. So striding in, Jed Lowry. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Come on, big guy. See it. Drive it right here. He's set and the pitch. And he gets ahead 0 and 1. Good pitch right there from the reliever. Tough for hitters to do much with pitches in that location unless they're looking for it. Liner towards second. So he'll add one to his total as that falls in. He's got three hits in this one. Hey, Dero, not a bad night. Three singles, but hey, you'll take three for four every day of the week. Yeah, in today's day and age, Dan, where everything's a homer, a walk, or a strikeout, it's refreshing to see this guy throw out three base hits. Stepping up now, Dominic Smith. He's working on a one for three thus far. Hey, keep Watch up for him. Hey, keep going up there. Touch up. You're next. Swing and a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. Well, it's been a rough series for him at the plate so far. That's four strikeouts in the first two games, so this pitching staff clearly has him figured out. Next up from New York, Jacob deGrom. Fourth plate appearance for him tonight, and why not? He's been in control all game long. On the ground to the right side. He's got it. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. So no runs on a hit here, no errors, one man left on. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. It's the Mets five, and the Padres one. So it's a tight spot here. First and second, one man out, and that'll bring up outfielder Hunter Renfro. Here now the 2-2. Hits this one hard the other way. There's Cano. The second for one. On to first. And he rolls a double play ball to end it here as this ball game is over. Well, fire up the highlight reel. Lowry just had a game to remember with the bat. Boy, did he ever, Matt. This is exactly what this team was looking for from him. Yeah, if this is any kind of preview of what we'll be seeing from him going forward, it's going to be a real boost for this ball club. You can bet the boys in the clubhouse are fired up right now because of him.
mentioned earlier that a lot of fans came out to the park today hoping to bear witness to a sweep. Heidi, what's the tenor in the stands as this close game gets nearer a conclusion? Well, Matt, these home fans brought their brooms today and they want to use them. We know in Major League Baseball how infectious the enthusiasm of winning can be. Coming through in this game to complete the series sweep would likely send this team's confidence soaring. Let's see if they can get it done. All right, thanks, Heidi. In now is Pedro Alvarez. Over two with a walk for him so far. First pitch of the at bat. Grounded foul off to the right and over toward the dugout. The wind up and the 0 1. A ball and a strike. Tough spot in the game right here. You have a very close call that doesn't go your way. This is when you have to really regroup as a pitcher and go out there and try to make quality pitches. Cano has it. And the throw to first is in time, so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number seven. Ready now for the Marlins. Jorge Alfaro. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Fouled off. Swing and a ball line down in the left field corner. But this is going to get fouled. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. That's the third time in this game he's gone down on strikes. Not the game he was hoping to have when he was taking batting practice, but at least his guys are ahead. And that'll bring up Peter O'Brien. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. Ground ball left side. Oh, in trouble there for Lowry. And they'll have no play as he reaches first base safely. Nice effort by the shortstop right there. Kept it in front of him. That's, a, that's all he could do right there, Dan. You know, Dealer in a spot like that, that's an infield single. That's a tough play. Just to knock that ball down was a pretty good job. But any way you look at it, that should be scored a base hit, and I'm sure it was. Justin Wilson takes over here with the runner at first and two gone in the inning. First pitch on its way. There's a fastball right down Broadway taken for a strike. And here's a swing and a miss as he falls behind nothing and two. In today's game, if you're not disciplined for striking out, why would you change your approach with two? Got him looking, and that'll do it. The inning is over. One left for Miami. They lead it five to four. Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Austin Bryce takes the mound now, and it appears he's being brought in to face the right-handed batter who waits next. Yeah, you usually don't hear the term righty specialist very often, but that's kind of how they're using him here, Matt. Most hitters have a harder time against pitchers of the same handedness, so we'll see if this move pans out. Here's the first pitch to him. First pitch fastball off the plate there, and it's ball one. There's the fastball that gets the lower part of the zone called for a strike. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. Very high, two and one. Line drive to left. And that'll be a base hit. So right away, the possible tying run is aboard to start the bottom of the seventh. The leadoff hitter finds his way on base. Should be interesting to see the cat and mouse with the manager. Does he use the bunt right here? Do we put a little hit and run on? Do we go old school, new school, and just let him swing away? Should be interesting.
Here's your one to Cespedes. And this one's in the dirt. And not what they were hoping for as that moves the possible tying run into scoring position. Yeah, and just one pitch after giving up the base knock, he uncorks a wild one and allows him to go to second. That's like giving a guy a double that he didn't even earn. That'll drive you crazy when you're on the mound. Now the 1-0. It's a curveball taken low for a ball. And now with the possible tying run at second here, we're going to have a pinched runner as they try to get a little more speed out there. Now the 2-0 home. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Guerrero giving chase. The catch is made, and the tying run is going to tag from second. The relay throw, and he is in there at third as the possible tying run. So they'll make a matchup move here and bring on a southpaw to face the left-handed hitter due up. The second baseman, Robinson Cano, will be his first assignment, and he's got a tough spot here with the runner at third and only one gone. First offering on its way. And a high strike to begin the at-bat. It's 0-1. Smith offers up perhaps one of the nastiest sliders around. And it won't be uncommon to see a lot of off-balance swings against it. And it'll be easy to see why once you see it come out of his hand. He's got a huge break on it. This is where, as a batter, you've got to find a way to put something in the outfield. Get something elevated. I know you've got to battle with two strikes and protect. But if anything is belt or above, you got to swing. The one two. And he fouls this one off. Hey, if he's going to offer at a fastball above the zone, why don't you just continue to climb the ladder? Don't be shocked if he goes even higher with this next pitch. Hard ground ball to third. Played on the backhand. And the throw to first will take care of him, but it comes at a cost as the tying run is in to score. I like that he didn't try to do too much there. All he needed was a ground ball to tie this thing up, and that's exactly what he does. That's great situational hitting. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. Starts him out with a changeup for a strike. Five runs, nine hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. And this catches the zone as well. It's 0-2 now. He pops him up toward the left side of the infield. Anderson is there, and the side is retired. But the tying run comes across here, so it looks like this could be a wire job. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now, and we are all tied five to five. Keon Broxton will stay in the ball game as he'll likely do the catching from here out. Settling in now, Gabby Guerrero. And this tie ball game is a battle of the bullpens now, and I'm sure you're enjoying that, Dan. Bullpens are such a big part of baseball now, Matt. All these teams have such good seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guys. It all boils down to whose bullpen is better. Here comes the first pitch. In there for strike one, 0 oh and 1. Swing and a line drive. Foul. Looking to put him away. Here's the 0 2. And look out as this one catches him. And a big mistake there as now the go ahead run is aboard to lead off the inning. Well, he might be feeling a little bit of a sting there, but he could take comfort in knowing that he represents the go ahead run. That could turn out to be a huge hit by pitch. So striding forward now, Neil Walker. And he's getting his first plate appearance here in the eighth after entering off the bench just a little bit ago. 
especially after drilling the last guy up at the plate. That's just a great job to get your mechanics back under you and establish yourself back in the strike zone. Under it, Lagarde, and there's one away. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Starlin Castro. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result as his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they could certainly roll too. Jerry Spamilia enters to make an appearance on the mound as he inherits a runner at first with one out in the inning. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Owen won the count. Oh, and this is hit high and deep out to left. But he will haul this in on the run as he had to go back to the warning track to do it, and there are two away. Riding in once Miguel. again, Miguel Rojas, three for four so far, and seeing it well in this ball game. Popped him up. Lowry moving to his left, and that ends the inning. Marlins leave one. This ball game still tied by ball. So coming to the plate, Jed Lowry. He worked a bases loaded walk in his last at bat. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. First pitch fastball off the plate there, and it's ball one. And he takes a cold strike one. Now the one and one pitch is looked at off the plate for a ball. Two and two. Wow, not sure what you're looking for right there, but that one was pretty much middle, middle, center cut. Tough pitch to take. And here's a ball hit in the air. And no one will track it down. Into the windup, here comes the 2 2 pitch. Hit sharply on the ground. Rojas scoops it up, throw on to first, and one shortstop grounds out to the other, one away. At the plate, Dominic Smith. He got called out on strikes his last time through. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Ball one to start the at bat. Hit sharply toward the right side, but he'll barely have to move out there and right as he hauls this one in for the second out. I know they say sometimes that these things even out, but that was a bullet line drive that gets caught. He would have represented the go ahead run. Todd Frazier will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Fastball off the plate away. It's ball one. In there, one and one. Frazier, or the Todd Father, as he's affectionately called. This is the final year of his current deal, so he'll be a free agent at season's end. You know, Matty, I know he's in the final. Oh, and this one has hit a ton out to center. Racing back the center fielder. And as Mets fans have heard before, that ball's out of here. So it's a solo shot to dead center as they've taken a one run lead. I can tell you one thing you might get away with throwing a ball in that location in the minor leagues. But when you get one up like that in the zone right over the plate against these guys, you're going to get exactly what you got. A really bad result.
Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn. No balls and a strike to count. He comes into this appearance in the midst of a one for four day. Popped straight up. Anderson in foul ground. He dives, but he can't make the catch. It's a foul ball. He pops it up. And that's in there. Base hit. Boy, this guy's been swinging a hot stick lately, and there's just another example. And even when he doesn't hit one on the barrel, he still manages another base hit. Yeah, don't overthink it. When you're flowing like he is right now, he's hot as a pistol. Everything's falling. Here's Juan Ligaris now. He's got a base hit tonight. No balls in one strike. McNeil leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning. Line toward the alley and left center. And Walker will put this one away and the inning is over. So a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We played eight full. The Mets lead this one six to five. Edwin Diaz comes on from the pen hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Stepping in, Brian Anderson. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Tough situation, down one here on the road, trying to score off one of the game's top closers. They've got the work cut out for him. Oh, that's for sure going to be a pitch he wants back. You're not going to get many balls right in the wheelhouse from a top-level arm like this. Here's the 0-2. And, and he takes strike three called on the fastball. One gone. So the leadoff man gone to start the top of the ninth as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you can see there, he finds himself in a flat-footed tie for the National League lead in that category. So here's the cleanup hitter, Pedro Alvarez. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Here comes the first pitch. Outside with the fastball that's 1 and 0. The 1 1. Waves and misses for strike number two. One ball, two straight. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. Well, you have to feel pretty confident about the way this one's going to end up as a manager. Two hitters, two strikeouts from the closer. There's not a whole lot more he can do to instill confidence that he's going to wrap this thing up without any problem. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. Crowd of over 39,000 on their feet. Oh, he went for the knockout pitch that time, but a good eye. One and two. Miami down to their last strike. Count even at two and two to the Marlins catcher. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Hey, d -Roll, all those brooms that people brought to the ballpark today, they're waving them mightily right now. Yeah, I mean, what's better for adding a little extra swagger to a team than a series sweep? This was a big win for this club, and I expect to see them walking tall into their next series.
The Mets have been wreaking havoc on their opponents so far this season. For a word on that, let's go down to the field with Heidi Watney. Matt, this fan base expected a contender this year, and so far they've gotten what they expected and more. They've been terrific in April and May, and they seem capable of leaving the pack behind. But I'm told they don't want to get ahead of themselves. They're going to stay humble, keep doing the little things right, and just play good baseball. And, well, it's working so far, guys. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. So stepping in, Pedro Alvarez, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. Sinker to open the A-B in there for strike one. Hey, I have no problem with that take right there. Reliever coming in, you haven't seen this guy for a while. Gives yourself a chance to calibrate what he's got. Trying to hold the lead, here's the delivery. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. Ninth inning coming up. Mets out in front, four to three. Austin Bryce enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Jeff McNeil will try to get his club a little ninth inning insurance as he'll grab a bat to pinch hit leading things off here. Towards second. And this will be put away easily for the out. Stepping into the box, Adani Echevarria. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. Here's the first pitch to him. He'll try to bunt his way on as he gets this one down. Throw to first will get him as they pounce on it quickly to snuff out the bunt attempt. Well, you know, he had a good idea right there. The infield was playing back, but it's not going to work out for him this time. That's a nice play to react, and they take care of him at first. Striding into the box, Juan Ligares. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. First delivery to him on the way. And he sends it the other way toward right center. And that's into the gap and should be extra bases. Around second now and headed for third. And he's safe. No. This is one park in the league that sees a lot of triples because of the way it's designed. And he adds another one heading to third for the three bagger. Here's the catcher, Travis Darno, as he connects on the first pitch with a fly ball to center. Moving under it, Guerrero. No trouble with this one, and the inning is over. No damage done after the two-out triple. More of the show, Saturday baseball, after this. Edwin Diaz is the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the night. Edwin Leading off the inning, Jorge Alfaro, as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. Not an easy thing to do to score off the game's elite closers, but down by one at home, you've got a chance with that last at bat. Owen won the count. In there, strike two. So back-to-back -back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? Normally not a good pitching plan to throw the same hitter, the same pitch three times in a row. But both of those sliders back to back were so good, I might just go ahead and try to throw another one. Smith has it, and he'll take this to the bag himself. One gone here in the ninth. And hey, if the first baseman is playing straight up there, that's probably a double down the line. But in order to prevent that late in the game, they had him guarding the line, and it obviously worked out perfectly. And that'll bring up Peter O'Brien. As he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Set to deliver the 0-1. In there, and it's 0-2 now. 
Can't say he's tickling around the zone. Those last two pitches were pretty much grooved right down the middle, but it didn't bite him. And that is swung on and missed, and things are starting to look bleak here for the home nine. There are two away now. Marlins down to their final out now. And standing in now, the Grandy man, Curtis Granderson. He's set. Here it comes. And here's a fastball called for strike one. That pitch was right down the heart of the plate, but obviously this guy had made up his mind on the on-deck circle. He was taken all away, and he was going to zone him up. Diaz, a native of Puerto Rico. He was selected in the third round during the first year. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. So another game is in the books. Guys, what do you make of where things stand around the league as we head into June? Matt, we are at the point in the season where certain teams have seized the mantle of front runner. If you are on one of those pace setters, you are looking to keep your stride. And if you're not, then you're trying to keep an eye on who's out in front of you and see if you can either cut into that lead or at least keep pace and not be left in the dust. Totally agree. This is usually the time when we start to see teams separating themselves a little bit, but there is a lot of season left at the same time. 